All right, welcome back. Today, we are diving deep into some of the most mind-boggling engineering mysteries of the ancient world. You know, we're talking about stones so massive they defy modern logistics, and metals forged with a precision that seems almost microscopic. It all boils down to one huge question. Were our ancestors just masters of forgotten techniques, or did they have technology that we're only now starting to catch up with? Okay, to really get a handle on the scale we're talking about, let's head over to Baalbek in Lebanon. In a quarry there, you'll find something called the Stone of the Pregnant Woman. Now, this isn't just any rock. It's a single, perfectly cut block of stone that weighs a staggering 1,200 tons. To put that in perspective for you, that's like taking three fully loaded Boeing 747s and mashing them together. It just sits there, unfinished, a silent monument to some kind of unbelievable ambition. And that's the real mystery, isn't it? How did they do it? I mean, think about it. No power cranes, no heavy-duty trucks. How on earth did ancient civilizations quarry, shape with such precision, and then move materials on a scale that seems completely impossible? You know, the standard explanations we hear sometimes just feel like they don't quite add up when you look at the evidence. All right, so here's how we're gonna break this down. We'll start with that central debate. Was their tech lost or just misunderstood? Then we'll dig into the secrets hidden in stone. And after that, their incredible mastery of metal. We'll even look at a, let's say, unusual theory about sound before we wrap it all up. So let's jump right into that big debate that really frames this whole thing. Are we looking at evidence of some kind of lost, almost futuristic technology? Or are we just completely underestimating the incredible, ingenious methods our ancestors came up with and then somehow forgot over time? You know, that's a really powerful point. Someone online put it perfectly. Humans have been working with stone for literally hundreds of thousands of years. It's totally plausible that a massive body of knowledge, an entire encyclopedia of techniques, was perfected, used, and then just became obsolete when metals came along. It was simply lost to time. Okay, so let's dig into the actual physical evidence. And honestly, there is no better place to start than with some of the most mysterious artifacts ever found. We're talking about ancient Egyptian drill cores cut straight out of solid granite. Now take a look at this. This is the famous core hashtag seven, which was discovered way back in the 1880s. And what's so wild about it are those spiral grooves you can see. A researcher named Christopher Dunn did the math, and he figured that to make marks like these, a drill would have to chew through solid granite at a speed hundreds of times faster than our own modern diamond-tipped drills. I mean, just think about that. So an incredible cutting speed like that led Dunn to a pretty controversial theory. He proposed that the Egyptians must have been using some form of high-frequency ultrasonic drilling. The idea is that they were basically vibrating the granite apart, which would allow for that kind of crazy fast cutting. But is there another explanation? Well, one alternative is this advanced primitive method. It suggests a really sophisticated multi-stage process. And this theory, it doesn't rely on some lost super technology. Instead, it points to a masterful understanding of practical chemistry combined with much simpler tools. And this is a great illustration of how it might've worked. So step one, a simple coring tool cuts a channel. Step two, they fill that channel with some kind of chemical agent, things like hydroxides and sea salt, that actually attacks and weakens the granite's mineral structure. And then finally, step three, a tool called a core dresser just scrapes away that softened crust. And here's the kicker. This theory suggests those mysterious grooves we see aren't from some super powerful initial drill, but from the much, much easier final finishing step. It kind of flips the whole problem on its head. So if we take this idea of advanced chemistry even one step further, you get to the work of a chemist named Joseph David Ovitz. He proposed a pretty radical theory for sites like Pumapunku. He argues that maybe some of these impossibly precise giant stones weren't carved at all. What if they were cast in place using a kind of sophisticated man-made geopolymer concrete? You know, this idea of an advanced, almost intuitive grasp of chemistry wasn't just limited to stone. It gets even crazier when we turn our attention to how ancient cultures worked with metal. We find evidence of a level of control that is, and I'm not exaggerating here, just astonishing. Okay, let's jump over to ancient Greece. To make sure their incredible temples could stand for centuries, the builders literally locked the massive marble blocks of places like the Parthenon together using iron clamps. But these weren't just simple chunks of metal, not even close. Yeah, when scientists did a detailed metallurgical analysis, they found these weren't just iron bars. 
They were actually made by forge welding multiple pieces of iron and steel together. Now that's a process that required them to reach, and more importantly, maintain temperatures of 1200 degrees Celsius. That is some seriously advanced, precisely controlled blacksmithing technology. Speaking of mastering high temperature metallurgy, that brings us to another legendary material, Damascus steel. You might also know it as Wootz steel from ancient India. These blades were famous for everything, their beautiful watery patterns, their insane sharpness, and their incredible durability. And for centuries, the recipe was completely lost. So how do they do it? Well, scientists took a 17th century blade and put it under a high resolution electron microscope, and they made a shocking discovery. The steel's amazing properties, the way it could be both super hard and flexible, came from structures we associate with the absolute cutting edge of modern science. We're talking cementite nanowires and carbon nanotubes. They were forming naturally during the unique forging process. And that is the big so what moment here. These ancient artisans, just through trial and error, were getting results at the nanoscale that we've only recently figured out how to understand and create intentionally. It totally redefines what we think primitive technology could be. Okay, let's shift gears for a minute. We've talked about chemistry, we've talked about metallurgy, but beyond that tangible evidence, there's a much more speculative, but honestly, really fascinating theory. What if ancient builders had mastered the invisible power of sound itself? Now, to even begin to understand this, we've got to look at a field called cymatics. It's basically the study of visible sound. And experiments show that if you take, say, a metal plate, cover it in sand, and then vibrate it with a specific sound frequency, the sand doesn't just bounce around randomly. No, it organizes itself into these beautiful, complex, geometric patterns. It's a stunning, visual proof that sound can literally shape and organize physical matter. So this principle has led to some pretty interesting theories. For example, some people have proposed that the Egyptian Ankh wasn't just a symbol for life, but maybe it was a functional tool, like a kind of tuning fork designed to harness very specific frequencies. You also hear talk about the potential power of music tuned to 432 hertz, a frequency some believe harmonizes with the Earth's natural resonance, and maybe could be used for things like healing or even moving objects. Now I have to be clear, this is all highly speculative. We don't have direct archaeological proof for any of this. But the core idea is pretty compelling, right? The thought that ancient cultures might have encoded a deep understanding of the universe's vibrational nature right into their most sacred symbols. Okay, so we've looked at advanced chemistry, nanotechnology and metal, and even these really out there theories about sound. So, where does all this leave us? What's the takeaway? Well, it seems like the real lost technology probably wasn't some single magical device, right? It was more likely a fundamentally different and maybe in some ways a more holistic way of understanding and working with the material world. It was a deep, sophisticated knowledge of chemistry, physics, and metallurgy, all working together. And here's the really fascinating irony in all of this. It's only now, with our most advanced scientific instruments, our electron microscopes, our spectrometers, that we are finally starting to appreciate the incredible depth and sophistication of their ancient genius. It really forces you to rethink the whole idea that technological progress is just this one simple straight line forward. So that leaves us with one final, pretty provocative thought. If we found actual nanotechnology hiding in a 400-year-old sword, and if advanced chemistry might be the secret to drilling granite, what other forgotten genius is still out there, just lying dormant in the ruins of the ancient world, waiting for us to rediscover it?